Well, everybody, uh, this is Charles Harper, and uh, I'm with a friend of the show, uh, Amy Harrop. And uh, Amy, you, Amy has uh, talked to us uh, many times on various things that she is doing. She's actually working with uh, Daniel uh, on, uh, on, on Federal Green. And because Amy really knows uh, the public domain, I wanted to dive deeper into the kinds of things you can do with the with with things that you find on the public domain. This is not my area of expertise. It's more of Amy's. And so I wanted to kind of talk to her so we can kind of look at the range of things that you can be doing because it, it's so broad um, and uh, and she knows it. Amy, uh, hello. Hi, Charles. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm super glad to be here today and to chat about the exciting and lucrative world of public domain with you. Yeah. Um, so, so Daniel was on with us and he talked about, um, you know, the, 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 the federal government and, and the kinds of things that you could, you could get. And we could only touch, scratch the surface, you know, before they got in the federal green. What I wanted to talk to you about is when, when you start talking about creating products to sell, because the people who are watching this, obviously, that's what they want to do. Can we start talking about just some of the things that you can think about doing, whether it's print on demand or books or whatever the case is? Can you help us think about the kinds of things we can do. Sure. And, you know, it definitely can be um, a lot bigger. You can certainly do books and books are very popular, but uh, you can also do a lot of different things as well. Uh, for example, I know you know, your people really enjoy video. And one of the things that you can do is you can actually create uh, video courses with pub, uh, uh, public domain government content. In fact, right hmm. now, there's actually a course on Udemy that is uh, based and, and created out of public domain. It's covering uh, combat training, cl uh, close combat training, and it's military hand-to-hand -hand combat, which sounds super exciting. Yeah. And, um, you know, the military, almost everything that they actually publish is in the public domain, you know, and that covers a lot of different things that's really popular and can be, do really well in a variety of courses, um, including not only books, but video courses, uh, workbooks, print-on-demand, you know, uh, like things like survival, uh, hunting techniques, uh, combat techniques, uh, you know, camping, those those types of things. Those are that's all types of content that's really popular. And that just you know, just one example, the military has a lot of uh, public domain content on that. So, I guess we we should probably be thinking, you know, along the lines of maybe what commerce, uh, maybe treasury, uh, maybe SBA and stuff like that. Does that do, does that ring a bell to you? Yeah, certainly. And, you know, there's so much content that is in the public domain. And one of the things that does make it a little treasure hunt is that there's a lot of different stuff that is created by these different departments and organizations. And so it's not like just necessarily in one place where you go, you actually, and, and you know, you have to see how to do that, but you can go and then check if these different places have public domain content. And one thing that I really like about this, which is why I think it makes it so good for creating content that you can get paid for is, you know, a lot of it is updated. It's, it's, it's new, it's mm -hmm. updated and it's mm -hmm. done by, by, um, you know, uh, top quality writers and, and things along those lines. And so it just really lends itself well to doing things like this combat training course, or, you know, another example is somebody actually took a, um, a book that uh, George W. Bush did while he was in the white house and they republished it as a record of the Bush presidency because the material fell under public domain. Uh -huh. Yeah. So um, if we if let's say we want to branch out from, uh, you know, digital products, I know, you know, you know, you know, things like print on demand. So let's, let's say that we had some information that maybe translated well on video. Um, can, can, if we had one product that we did that was digital. How could we go horizontal with that and find other areas that we can go, let's say, with that same product? Do you have some ideas about that? Uh, sure. I mean, print on demand is great, particularly with images and if you want to take public domain content. And, you know, some of the best public domain image-based content is actually from NASA. They have some stunning photos that are all in the public domain and that lend themselves really well to creating that type of print-on-demand content, whether it's something that's uh, going to be like, you know, 
uh, t-shirts or mm. uh, flip-flops with like a background printed on them or yoga pants. I mean, you know, there's, there's pretty much anything or even just uh, sticking with prints like uh, downloadable prints and things like that. Now, one question that I got um, on the, the, the YouTube video that I did with Daniel was, is, are, there, are there rules, let's say, for, because you know my audience and your audience, they're going to be from around the world. Um, how does this impact, let's say, if you're from another part of the world, if you're looking at federal green? It's, if it's in public domain, then anybody can use it. You don't have to be a citizen of the United States. And a lot of times places, people in other countries are familiar with their own country's public domain because, you know, they, their other countries do similar things as well, or they have public domain um, availability. So that the type of information that's out there that we say is created by our government is available for public domain, you know, worldwide. And public domain, you know, means no restrictions. It's not like um, Creative Commons, so for example, where you might have some restrictions or you might have to do some attribution. You know, I mean, sometimes even with public domain, they, they might say, oh, it'd be great if you gave us an attribution, but you don't have to. With public domain, you don't have to do anything like that. You can just use it however you want, which is, I think, so great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, so part of what I know Daniel's doing in the course is he's helping people to find where it is and then to determine and to make sure, yes, it's in the public domain. So we've talked about the fact that we can create digital. We've also, we can also create um, you know, things that are physical. Um, and I know we can move some of that to Amazon. Um, how does this work now? Because I know that, that there used to be this sort of uh, cloud over Kindle. Has, has that changed over the years, Amy? Are people now doing more stuff with KDP and Kindle now, now that, that maybe the, the, the rules have been clarified on public domain? Well, there are still some guidelines for public domain on Kindle. You have to, I think it's the same guidelines they've pretty much had where you have to include either some illustrations or some um, additional uh, updates or contents like notes or something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, it's all relatively easy to, to do that if you do want to in include a public domain uh, uh, version. Uh, the other thing, though, is you're, you're going to be meeting those requirements if, even if you take something and just change it up a little bit. You know, you're, you're going to be meeting the requirements for that. In addition, there's also other places. There's a lot. There's other digital book places now. If you did want to sell digital content where you can, you know, sell on, on public domain as well. So. There are, there are some that have less uh, restrictions. Um, the great thing, too, though, about the government content is it's not so much all about, you know, taking necessarily like a, an old school public domain book that people are very familiar with. It's actually taking content that people aren't particularly familiar with. It might be, you know, technical. It might be, uh, you know, training content, how-to content, uh, health-based content, and then, you know, putting it together so people can have access to it. So that's one of the great things about using, I think, government public domain in particular, is it's not this, you know, it's not the same old stuff. You're not taking like Charles Dickens and just doing another copy of like Tale of Two Cities or something. You're actually taking information that most people haven't seen and aren't familiar with, or images or, you know, video or whatever it is that you're going to be doing with it. I want to, I want to do, um, just take us down a path here and maybe talk about I'm gonna create a little competition for myself. Uh, so, so let's say that um, I wanted to create a PLR product and I wanted to create one, like c give people content on how to start a business. So I could use Daniel's instruction to find out where in the government there is information on how to start a business. And then I could put that together. And since there are no restrictions, I could put that together as PLR content, I could clean it up to make sure that it, you know, it reads well, and I could sell that, let's say, within our space, right? Is that, does that sound like that's something I could do? Yeah, that definitely does, especially if you are taking that content and, like you said, cleaning it up, maybe doing some value additions, like making that content, like, checklist space, you know, is starting a business, you know, there's a lot of different things you have to do, so you could take the content and then perhaps create, um, you know, the, the, 
how-to material and then add in some checklists or worksheets along those along those lines and create even more value out of it. And then you're right, what's the great the great thing about that is you can then actually take that and license it as private label rights content. So if you're listening, right, if you don't do what I just said, if you don't beat me to it, I'm going to do it. So, you know, you go ahead and do it. Uh, so, so, so that's, that's really wild. So I'm just thinking off the top of my head, um, there's probably something on cybersecurity. I could do that same thing, right? I could put something together on cybersecurity because there's probably up-to-date information on cybersecurity within the federal government someplace. I use Daniel's course to help me to find it. I would then have content that I could either relicense or I could sell it to the end user. Again, does that sound like the right kind of thing to do? Definitely. You know, as long as you find and identify the correct licensing for that content, and that's what uh, Daniel's course is going to be helping with, then you can take that material and rework it and, re- and license it again and put your name on it, you know, um, and that type of thing, and then have a license to it once you access that. Yeah. So, so, so what, what I, I think what I like about this is that there are like there are lots, lots, lots of layers, right? I could sell it to the end user or I could actually, if I can find the right uh, channel of content, I could sell to the marketer. I could sell to the content creator also, um, you know, if I find, and as you said, give value to it based on what I find from, excuse me, what I find with, uh, with Daniel's course. Yeah, so you have lots of different levels where you can do that. So it's just almost um, so many great ways because you have the different uh, levels of of who's going to be getting the content. And then, of course, you know, going back to what we talked about earlier, you then also can mix in offering the content in different modalities and different aspects of it as well. So there's just a lot of a lot of potential there with that type of content. Right. Okay. so um, so so in essence. One of the things that I, I should be thinking about is maybe, you know, if, if I'm listening to this, you know, if I, if I already have an audience, um, I should be thinking about ways that I can leverage things to, you know, supply to my audience. Or if I don't, let's say I don't have a business model right now, um, I could be thinking along the lines of supplying content creators, right? Is that, is, is that, is that viable or, or maybe, maybe, maybe I'm not thinking of it right. I think that is viable. If you have an audience of content creators, then they're going to be needing content. And I think if you can put together that this type of easily digestible content for them in the types of topics that are in high demand, then that is something they're going to be interested in. And um, again, uh, you know, if, even if you get the type of content that's maybe just written, you could people can take that and make it even more valuable. Uh, you know, like that military course I mentioned where they can create uh, videos out of it, for example, or they can create something that's a little bit more interactive. I mean, we all know that it's just a lot easier to do that once you actually have a starting point. And that's what I think this type of content can can give people because not only um, is it there, but as I mentioned, it's also up to date as well. So it's it's something that is going to be, uh, you know, already edited, already up to date, and then you can just take it into the next level. Yeah, see, one of the things that people have talked to me about a lot, and you know, we have uh, we've talked about in our in our insider group, that you know now's the time that you know if you're going to be considering a podcast, um, you know now now might be the time to do that. The 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 pushback that I get is, you know, Charles, I, I wouldn't even know where to start talking about something on a regular basis in order to do that. This is really sounds like to me, you know, you've got you've got you've got accurate credible information you know if you can if you can kind of regurgitate it and deliver it this is a good source of up-to-date information that you can you can you can feel good about delivering in in an audio format because maybe you know you don't want to you don't want to be on camera but you could you could do this yes and you're absolutely right not everybody wants to be on camera and we know that podcasts are incredibly popular and there's just a lot of uh, different topics that people are tuning into to now with podcasts. So, uh, and a lot of times, these some of these topics may not be, you know, particularly as well served as they could be. I mean, you know, for example, thinking about business. I mean, one of the topics this last year would have been, you know, that you could have gotten information 
from would have been, you know, starting uh, getting a PPP loan. You know, that was very timely and very popular. So that could have been something that people could have access information about from the government and put together a podcast about that. Amy, I'm gonna I'm gonna save uh, I'm gonna save this last question. I'm gonna say my most difficult question for last for you. Um, okay. I, <laughs> um, you know, w- whenever you and you've experienced this, whenever you start, you know, uh, an an info product, you, you know, you 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 take a step back, you 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 get set set back a little to learn something new, and then you have to reincorporate it into what it is that you're doing. It sounds like this is a little easier to incorporate into what you're doing because all you're really trying to 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 learn from Daniel is where can I find information that I need to create something now and 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 I've been asking you the same question does that sound like the right mindset to go into federal green with in other words yeah I know I'm going to learn something new yeah I know I'm going to have to stop doing something to learn this but once I learn it it sounds like something I can plug into what I'm already doing fairly easily. Is that the right mindset? Yes, especially if you do already have a system set up or you have an audience, whether it's end users or content or course creators, if you're you know, doing end stuff or private label rights content. I think that the federal green content is going to fit into pretty much everything because it offers such a wide variety of things for, that are suitable for print on demand, uh, you know, that are image based. Uh, things that have to do with uh, learning and how to, things that are health related, things that are business related. It, it covers pretty much everything, you know, except, except maybe like popular culture. But other than that, it covers pretty much everything else that you would want to be monetizing. Yep, right on. I'm Amy, I'm going to do the same thing I did with uh, Daniel. Um, people who are watching, there's a link right down below here, the plrshow.com forward slash Daniel. Um, if you go there, you'll be able to see, you know, the bonuses that we're offering along with Federal Green. I think we've got a we've got a Photoshop course, which I think would be helpful for you. You know, if you want to learn Photoshop in terms of putting some other stuff together and then some other stuff that I think will help you to leverage the information that you're getting here. Um, um, and if you're listening again, I'll say that URL for you again, the PLR forward slash Daniel. Um, Amy, any any last words, anything else that we should kind of know and, and think about as we, you know, as we dive into Federal Green? I just want to say that there's so much fun here and so much potential and that I think that if anybody and everybody picks this up, they're going to find something in there that's going to turn a light bulb on for them or they're going to find some piece of content that they're going to be able to use in their business. It's just super exciting And I'm really pleased that Daniel has made this course available to everybody because, you know, speaking about being an American citizen, if you're an American, your taxpayer dollars have gone to to create this content. So we might as well get as much use out of it as we can. Yep, right on. Um, Everybody, once again, um, this is our friend of the show, Amy Harrop. um, And uh, what I will suggest that you do is to go to the URL, the plrshow.com forward slash Daniel. And you'll be able to see our list of bonuses. Make sure you click through that page to go and get Federal Green. And then do do write me and tell me that you have done something with it. And uh, if you do that, then uh, I'll have something for you. Show me your finished project, and then I'll pass something else on to you uh, in order to help you to leverage that even more. Amy, thank you as always. Um, I appreciate uh, appreciate you, appreciate your knowledge and the way you are able to kind of help our people um, to get the most out of these things. Well, thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Okay, everybody, have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care.